I honestly stopped worrying about the anomalous Apollo 11 television transmissions that Bart Sabrell and David Percy discussed in their respective videos. Because if the Apollo 11 telecasts are the smoking gun, the Apollo 10 telecasts must be the atomic bomb. But still, way back in 2006, I had made some observations of my own. The lads from MoonMovie.com were so impressed with my findings that they asked me for a DVD of Moonfaker Exhibit B. Back in 2006, it all seemed very straightforward and clear-cut, but since then, there have been many brutal back and forths and a lot of new information has emerged. Everything is so conflicting that I'm not even going to try and conclude one way or the other. It all started back in 1999. Bart Sabrell was sent a reel of Apollo 11 footage labelled as not for public distribution. The reel comprised of a series of telecasts from the mission, each labelled with their own title card with a days, hours and minutes timer. The title card for the two videos, featured in Sabrell's A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Moon documentary, are dated as being filmed on Day 198, 1969. Sabrell's narrator reads Day 198 as being July 18, 1969. It cannot be misconstrued that this staging was done for some other reason prior to the mission, for the reel itself is slated and dated July 18th, 19th and 20th, 1969. The very days of the mission, when they were said to be approaching and achieving lunar orbit. This statement seems to be in agreement with a statement made by Goldstone engineer Bill Wood. In his paper available for download on the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal website, he writes, on Saturday, July 19th, television viewers in both hemispheres had watched as the crew removed the probe and drogue and opened the tunnel between the two craft. Aldrin slid through, adjusted his mind to the new body orientation, checked out the systems, and wiped away the moisture that had collected on the lunar module windows while the world watched over his shoulder. The telecast Wood refers to is included on the Spacecraft Films DVD, along with the telecasts featured in Sabrell's video. According to Mark Gray, these two videos were filmed 21 hours and 9 minutes apart. So logically, if the probe and drogue removal video was filmed on July 19, as Wood claimed, this means the other two must have been filmed July 18. So you can imagine my surprise when I found a still shot of the first telecast printed in the July 18, 1969 issue of the West Australian. The NASA title card indicates that this video was filmed at 1.15am Greenwich Mean Time. Because the newspapers are printed the day before the release, this means the telecast had to have been filmed on July 17, not July 18. I went public with my findings in Moonfaker Exhibit B. I concluded that NASA was filming this in advance, and the footage mistakenly went to air earlier than intended. Once this video was released, the regulars from the pro-NASA side attacked and attacked and attacked, insisting that NASA never claimed this video was filmed on July 18. That the NASA title card actually reads July 17. Giving them their credits, the title card is a bit open to interpretation. It is not clear what they mean by Day 198. It all depends on how they counted January 1st. If they counted January 1st as day 0, day 198 is July 18. Makes sense. All the days, hours, minutes, timers that I've seen don't start counting days until 24 hours has elapsed. By comparison, NASA counted the Curiosity rover's first day allegedly on Mars as Sol 0, rather than Sol 1. But then again, if they counted July 1st as Day 1, this would make Day 198 July 17. I released a follow-up video in which I pointed out Wood's statement in his essay. That video was released in 2007, and for a full two years, not one propagandist said another word along these lines. But then in 2009, I was informed that Wood's statement was in fact lifted from a 1978 NASA book, Chariots for Apollo, written by Brooks, Grimwood and Sweenson. And there is one glaring difference between the statement in Wood's paper and the book he lifted it from. An important clarifier was omitted. The full statement actually reads... On Saturday, July 19th, almost 62 hours after launch, Apollo 11 sailed into the lunar sphere of influence. 
earlier. Television viewers in both hemispheres had watched as the crew removed the probe and drogue and opened the tunnel between the two crafts. Aldrin slid through, adjusted his mind to the new body orientation, checked out the systems, and wiped away the moisture that had collected on the lunar module windows while the world watched over his shoulder. Clearly, the original authors are not saying that the probe and drogue removal was filmed in July 19. They are saying that the Apollo 11 entered lunar orbit on July 19, and prior to that, the probe and drogue removal was televised. The text that Wood removed completely alters this paragraph's intended meaning. Now, the copy I purchased is a paperback from 2009. After years of hunting around, I finally tracked down an original copy from 1978, just to make sure that this additional text wasn't added at some later date. Sure enough, there it was too. I was honestly shocked when I learned this. Wood gave no indication in his paper that the text had been lifted from elsewhere, and frankly, I would never have even dreamed of such quote mining from someone in Wood's position. I mean, I would have thought that the head guy at one of NASA's radio observatories would have relied on his own first-hand experience to recount the events of that day, not lift passages from third-party sources and pass it off as his own words. To try and make sense of it all, I did what I should have done in the first place, correlate the official NASA transcript with the audio track from the video. But even after doing so, the discrepancy still showed up. Here is the title card for the first Apollo 11 television transmission. Now, for argument's sake, we'll assume that by day 198, they mean July 17. This slate indicates that the filming began at 1.15am Greenwich Mean Time. Moments after the video starts, we can hear the voice of Capcom Charlie Duke. Listen closely. The transcript logs this statement as being made at 10 hours and 33 minutes into the flight. Apollo 11 was launched on July 16, 1969, at 1.32 p.m. at Greenwich Mean Time. If we add 10 hours and 33 minutes, we get July 17, 12.05 a.m. at Greenwich Mean Time, not 1.15 a.m. as stated on the title card. So it seems, although a lot less than I originally thought, NASA did indeed claim this video was filmed later than it actually was. Or is it the other way around? I honestly don't know what to conclude. If anyone wants to try and make heads or tails out of this, be my guest. The one thing that is certainly clear is that regardless of what they mean by day 198, in one circumstance, NASA has claimed this video was filmed at 1.15am, and in another circumstance, claimed it was filmed one hour and ten minutes earlier. New York Times writer John Noble Wilford once wrote that during the 60s, NASA's reputation had caused reporters to say, tongue-in-cheek, that the agency's initials stood for, never a straight answer. I'm starting to see why.